Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper, and this week I'm on vacation here at Yellowstone National Park. If you've never been, it is a really interesting geological area because the entire park is located on top of the caldera of a massive supervolcano that only erupts every 600,000 years. While I'm here, I... This week, it had to erupt this week while I'm here. That's, that's just, that's perfect timing. That's great. Well, as soon as that shock wave hits, um, I'm gonna get fried. So um, I guess since I'm gonna die anyway, I might as well take this opportunity to get a few things off my chest. Uh, the big one really is that uh, it, it's been a secret, but I guess I'll share it now. I'm quad gendered polyamorous. Uh, even I don't really understand what the quad gendered part means, but polyamorous means that I am sexually attracted to plastic. Uh, I wanted to share that because. What happened? Well, the effect was going to be too uh, time consuming if it hit the tree line, so we decided to stop it before the tree line. Oh. Um. So. That means I'm not going to die? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're good. What was that That sexual peculiarity uh, you were talking about? Uh, yeah, uh, well... What was that guys, all about? This is a joke. I was just, a know, joke, yeah? Just, yeah, just fooling. Mm -hmm. Just fooling around. I'm totally normal. Totally normal. This is Practice Prepper, and yes, today we are talking about the Yellowstone Supervolcano. Uh, as I mentioned in the open, it has a period of eruptions of 600,000 years. Every 600,000 years it erupts, and the last time it erupted was about 600,000 years ago. So an eruption is imminent, geologically speaking. Uh, you know, when you're speaking geologically, it's kind of like give or take a couple thousand years. So, you know, the thing could erupt today, or it might be 2,000 years from now. Um, but I wanted to do this video today because a lot of scientists are feeling like that eruption might be sooner than later. Uh, there have been a lot of earthquake swarms that have been increasing both in frequency and in magnitude. Uh, and there are some signs that maybe uh, that volcano might be preparing to erupt. Uh, scientists are putting it, uh, the percentages that I'm seeing are kind of somewhere in the 10% chance that it will erupt in the next 100 years which doesn't seem that bad, but if you consider that scientists, at least in my experience, tend to underplay dangers, I find, at least, you know, with the, uh, the whole process of climate change, all the, the warning benchmarks that they've tended to put out, we, the Earth has actually exceeded most of those. Uh, so I find that when scientists issue a warning, I feel like usually they're a little bit conservative in their estimates, when it's something really bad that people don't want to happen. So I think some of that might be at play there when they're saying a 10% chance over the next 100 years. And also, even if it is only a 10% chance in the next 100 years, the, the fallout of Yellowstone's volcano erupting would be so grave and massive for the whole world, I think it's worth talking about, even if it's a low percentage chance thing. I have some notes here because there, there's some numbers associated with this. And I didn't want to screw up the numbers. Um, so let, let's talk about what, how bad would an eruption be uh, you know, uh, if Yellowstone blew up. First off, where is Yellowstone? Yellowstone's in northwest Wyoming, if you're not familiar with it. Beautiful park. I've been there twice, I think. Uh, definitely worth uh, a check before it blows up. <laughs> it's a beautiful place to visit. Um, and if you live within 100 miles of it, you're also in luck because you really don't need to prepare. If you live within 100 miles of Yellowstone, there's no real need to prepare because if it ever erupts, you're going to be pretty much instantly killed. So you're off the hook. No need to prepare for it. Uh, for people who were within 500 miles of Yellowstone at the time of the eruption, the outlook is still pretty grim. Uh, you know, most estimates I, I'm seeing are somewhere to the order of 90% of, of all people will be dead within 500 miles within pretty short order. Uh, you know, just from the ejecta and, uh, you know, the dust clouds and, you know, all the gases that come out of the volcano. You got to get out of that 500 mile radius pretty, pretty quickly. Um, even up to a thousand miles, uh, estimates are that there is going to be a severe amount of water contamination and ash fallout, up to 10 feet of ash, you know, going out like, you know, a thousand miles or so from Yellowstone. So it's a very serious event. 
that would kill crop production for the entire center of our country, which is where we grow most of our crops, right? <laughs> uh, even people who live outside of that uh, radius, you know, I, I'm here on the east coast of the United States, up in New England. Uh, even around here, the expectation is that we would get at least several millimeters, if not maybe a centimeter of ash falling from the sky. And it has global implications as well, uh, because that ash is going to spread all the way around the earth and create a, gro a global cooling uh, cycle of possibly up to 20 degrees or, you know, scientists can be conservative, <laughs> 20 degrees or more of global cooling, which will, you know, kill crop production and so many other things that humans have depended on. It'll throw everything into chaos, really. Uh, you also have globally the issues of dust in inhalation um, and, 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 and the famines and things that come with, uh, you know, the crops all dying off. So it, it truly has global implications, and I thought it was worth chatting a little bit about today because, like I said, there's been an uptick in activity and, you know, there's a prepping channel. Let's, let's, let's play this one out in our mind. Um, so the challenges, and I'm going to talk more about the challenges that are faced by people outside of that thousand mile radius uh, around Yellowstone. Obviously, if you're within that thousand mile radius, get the hell out as soon as you can and then, you know, uh, you know, pick up the, the tips that we're going to talk about here. But your first order of business is to get the hell out of that thousand mile radius. Um, people outside of that are going to need to have things like respirators. There's going to be a lot of dust up in the air, and volcanic ash in particular is very abrasive to the human lungs. You're going to want to filter uh, your, you know, any of your breathing when you're outside, and you're going to want to seal up your house as best as possible. You're going to read stories about the dust bowl where people woke up with dust, you know, all over their head and everything from everything blowing around. If you can get your house sealed up, you don't have to be wearing respirators inside of it quite as much. Or if you are, they're not going to be getting clogged up as much. And that's one thing. If, you ha if you're buying respirators, you don't just buy one. They, they have a life to them. They get clogged up and you need to have multiple respirators uh, in the order of dozens, <laughs> depending on how long the event is going to be. Uh, and that, it, that effect is exacerbated uh, if it's hot and humid and there's a lot of humidity getting plugged up in there as well. Uh, so, respirators. You're definitely going to want to have that both to protect your lungs, uh, well, no, to protect your lungs, that's why you have respirators. Food and water, those are the other uh, challenge. Uh, water, surface sources are going to get contamination from all that ash, uh, and you're going to need to make sure that you can filter all of that. Rainfall is going to be contaminated with all that ash, so you're going to need to be able to filter your water and, and get water somehow. Uh, you know, if you're pumping out of a well, the well should be fine uh, because, you know, the ground is your filter, but you have to make sure that you have power to, to, um, to be pumping for a reasonably long span of time when there may be power outages and things of that nature because of the ongoing calamity. Uh, food is the other thing. You've got to have food. You have to have it set aside. Don't rely on your garden because there could be up to two years of, you know, really bad summers where you can't grow much of anything. Uh, because of all that uh, particulate dust up in the air uh, that's blocking the sun's rays, which will also have an impact on solar panels, if you think about that. I would imagine that, you know, once the initial cloud, uh, you know, passes, that it would just be a reduction, and, you know, you'd still get some efficacy out of them, you know, as long as you're dusting them off every day. Uh, but, uh, but that's something to think about as well. You also have to think about heat. Uh, if we were having crazy cold winters that are, you know, 20 degrees or more below normal, you know, can you heat your house? Can you keep yourself warm if you don't have access to electricity? Can, you know, that pretty much puts you into, you know, stockpiling fossil fuels or, uh, you know, firewood and things of that nature. Your solar heating capacity is going to be diminished during those periods as well, for the same reason that the entire Earth is uh, having a diminished ability to warm itself. Um, the other thing to think about, and this is the last thing, is nuclear fallout coming along with all of that. Now, Possibly wisely so. I don't know if it was planned this way. There are not any nuclear power plants within that about thousand mile radius of Yellowstone. Maybe someone was really smart <laughs> when they when they did the planning on that and said, you know, just just don't put any there, you know, just in case. Um, but there are there are some nuclear um, assets within that area. There's some nuclear weapons, uh, and there are uh, you know, nuclear laboratories and things of that nature. Now, the nuclear power plants are the things you really have to worry about because if they lose the ability to cool their fueling rods, they go into meltdown, and we've seen with Fukushima what that's like. And, and you can imagine how much worse it would be if that was happening at multiple sites, uh, you know, in in the middle of an ongoing you know multi-year disaster with ash. You know, it would be God. 
Would that kill all, all life on Earth? Possibly. I don't know. But fortunately, there are no nuclear power plants, at least according to my research, within that thousand mile-ish radius around Yellowstone. But there are those other assets. So I think there's some question as to you know how secure those would be, whether they would uh, you know receive damage, and whether that would uh, put them into some sort of an, an extra dangerous state. Um, but I, I would say the the likelihood of that seems rather low, but it's worth thinking about. You have some ability, if there was a public warning that something happened with uh, one of those sites, could you get yourself uh, in some sort of a safe situation if there was going to be some radioactive contaminated dust coming your way or something like that. So something to think about. Uh, is this something that's on your radar? Is this something that you're planning for? Are there contingencies that you've thought of that I haven't mentioned here? Please mention anything that you've thought about in the comments below, any tips that you have or thoughts you have about what I've presented here. That's it, and thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.